prejudice and division. You know, as I think about the injustices and the horrible things that went on, you know, in our history, I realize that the spirit of prejudice and division of people who are different stems from our sinful nature. It is not just a black and white issue. This, is, this spirit is not limited to just one group of people. The sin nature is in all of us. You see, I think most of us have been conditioned to be prejudiced. You know, for various reasons, such as fear and ignorance, we have, we have formed prejudices and stereotypes, and we give labels to people who are not like us. You know, so that's why I had to ask myself, am I guilty? Am I guilty of being prejudiced against any group of people? You know, prejudice is not just limited to ethnicity. You know, we could have disdain for people of a different political view, religious view. We could stereotype the homeless and we fail to reach out to them. We could hate people from different co a different country. They may be the same ethnicity, but a different country. They may have an accent. You know, we hate foreigners. We don't like rich people because of whatever. We don't like poor people because of whatever. You know, people with disabilities, people with mental challenges, difficult people, people with gender, gender issues, people who are just plain weird. <laughs> you know, not like me. <laughs> <laughs> or it could be that we retaliate against a group of people because of what their people it's our people. But as Christ followers, Jesus has called us to touch all of the above with his love. You see, Jesus made mankind in his image. We're all in the image of God. He made us from one blood. So there actually is no several races. There's one race, the human race. You know, and Jesus came to reconcile us, to reconcile us to himself and to break down walls. You know, even though Jesus is different from us in his nature, he, he, he became like us. He came like us so that he can touch us and so that we can be touched by him. Scripture says, the Son of Man came eating and drinking, but the Son of Man also came touching, healing, and loving. You know, he reached across ethnic, social, socioeconomic, gender, and every line you can think of. You know, he was radical in his day in breaking down walls. You know, just to give a few examples of how Jesus touched people. In Luke 7, 14, because of his love and compassion, he touched the coffin of the widow's son and he raised her from the dead. He touched the hand of the little girl and raised her from the dead. He touched the heart of the woman at the well and the woman caught in adultery. He allowed Mary to touch his feet and wipe it with her hair. Jesus touched the eyes of the blind and he touched the leper. But Jesus didn't have to touch anybody to heal them, really, especially the unclean leper. He could have healed them from a distance. But I believe that the touch of Jesus' hand is just a symbol of his wanting relationship, his wanting oneness with us. You know, today, on the one hand, it seemed like we've come a long way from the segregation that plagued our nation. But on the other hand, it seems that we're more divided than ever. On every front, we're divided. So I think as we celebrate black history, I think God is laying on my heart and on the Christian community of a whole that we should allow ourselves to be the tools in his hands to knock down, to break down those walls, those dividing walls that separate us and that keep us apart from each other. We should reach across the lines or the aisles and touch the hands of those that we would not normally interact with. We should get to know and educate ourselves about people different from us. Sometimes we hold these strange views about other people and on true ideas, you know, all whites are prejudiced, all blacks are criminals, all Asians, all Latin. You know, we have all these different ideas and untrue statements that
that we make about other people, we need to not do that anymore. We need to reach out with the love of Jesus. Jesus wants us to forgive those who have wronged us. He wants us to touch all people with his love. That was the dream of Martin Luther King when he said that he, he wants to see where all God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants, Catholics, will join hands and sing in the words of the old music spiritual, free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, I'm free at last. You know, the Apostle Paul said it this way. He said it in Galatians 3.28. He just read it. I didn't know that scripture was going to be read. There is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor free, no, for we are all one in Christ. But even before Martin Luther King and the Apostle Paul, that was the plan, that was the purpose, that was the desire of Almighty God who made us all in His image. He wants us to be one, to spend eternity with Him. So as I celebrate black history this year and beyond, I want to be more aware and more intentional about reaching out and touching those who may be different from me. And I hope that we all do the same. Amen. Amen.